Good evening. I'm Sam Hastings. I'm director of the School of Library and Information Science, and it is my honor to welcome you tonight to the Deans and Directors Lecture and Awards Ceremony. Tonight, we're honoring the people that keep our school in the limelight and um, help us take a message to the community that we're leaders. We're also honoring the past deans and directors. It's so good to see you, Rick. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? You take back all the good news. Um, geez. And we're honoring the previous deans and directors of the school um, with this lecture tonight. Um, you're in for a treat. I'm not going to tell you anymore. You've seen all the posters. We are going to start the evening with the Beta Phi Mu inductions, and I'm going to turn it over to Jenny Dilworth and Kristen Lawson. Good evening. My name is Kristen Lawson. I'm the current president of the Beta Omega chapter of Beta Phi Mu here at the University of South Carolina, and it is an honor to be here tonight with you to um, induct 10 new members into Beta Phi Mu. Um, and at this time, I'd like to ask those who are here, we have, I believe, three with us, seven who will be inducted in absentia, but the three who are with us, if they can come and sit on the front row as we share some words and go through our initiation ceremony. The initiates have been declared eligible for membership in Beta Phi Mu by virtue of their superior scholastic records, their character, and their professional promise. They have been recommended by the University of South Carolina School of Library and Information Science for this recognition. We meet here today to honor those who have met the standards of scholarship in their professional school and whose records indicate that they will contribute significantly to the development of the library and information professions. The obligations of membership in our International Honor Society include a continuing interest in research, scholarship, and leadership. In an information society, we have a right to expect that the most talented professionals demonstrate a willingness to use their talents in service to that society. In accepting membership in Beta Phi Mu, you commit yourselves and your talents to the promotion of the best in scholarship and service. In order that you may understand our common purposes, I'll explain that commitment to scholarship. Since its inception in 1949, Beta Phi Mu has promoted scholarship through the maintenance of high standards for admission to its ranks through publications distinguished for their content and design, through important lecture series in its chapters, and through the provision of scholarships. Our society has also encouraged scholarly endeavors through support of the first few volumes of the Journal for Library and Information Science Education and Library History Seminar during the centennial of the American Library Association in 1976. Our Beta Phi Mu monograph series and lecture series continue this tradition. Our name, Beta Phi Mu, contains the initial letters for the Greek word, which can be translated, librarians are the guardians of knowledge. However, our purpose is indicated by our insignia, the dolphin and anchor of the Venetian printer Aldus Manateus whose small books of Greek and Latin classics provided the world of his day with greater access to information. He noted that he, who, he had made a vow to devote his life to public service. That service ideal has never been more important than it is in our present world. Jenny will speak of our commitments to service and leadership. Our motto indicates that service to others is one of our major commitments. That service can and does assume many forms and occurs in many types of libraries and information agencies. 
Allied with scholarship, service can extend the boundaries of knowledge and teach information skills to help citizens cope with the future. We need your leadership not only in creating knowledge, but also in promoting the usefulness of knowledge. Those who have the potential for scholarship and service have a special obligation to develop leadership for their profession. Since your scholarship has already been demonstrated, more can be expected of you than of others. In all periods of history, the demand for leadership has been greater than the supply. That is no less true today. An information society requires specially gifted persons to provide solutions not only for the technical, but also to the human problems. From you, we expect our future leaders to emerge. In Beta Phi Mu, we look forward to working with you in achieving our common goals. As the light is the ancient symbol of learning, Beta Phi Mu adopted it for our initiation ceremonies. Learning must overcome ignorance as light overcomes the darkness. We ask you to accept this symbol of our dedication to spread to the spread of knowledge and understanding throughout the world. For we hold with Thomas Jefferson that no republic can be ignorant and be free. I now ask you to signify acceptance of these ideals by stepping forward as I call your name to receive your membership pin and certificate. As I shared with you, we have 10 um, initiates this year and um, we have two who are with us tonight, so I'm going to read all Ted names let, um, and tell you just a little bit about each, um, each person, maybe a glimpse into why they've received this, um, this honor. Anne Marie is Asbill in absentia, received her undergrad degree from the Honors College here at USC in History and German, um, and she shared with us that her degree was possible with the help and kindness of Drs. Albright and Feehan. Um, they were excellent role models for her. The second this evening is Thomas Jonte in absentia. He received a bachelor's degree in history from Presbyterian College and is currently working as a children's librarian in Port Orange, Florida. Um, he did share with us he's tackling his first solo planned summer reading program this summer and I know coming from um, SLIS he will be successful with that well prepared. Um, next is Katie Malone. She's in absentia as well. She received her undergrad degree from Christopher Newport <coughs> University in philosophy and English. She currently serves as a technical service specialist at the Williamsburg Regional Library in Virginia. Um, and she's, she also shared that her supervisor has been very impressed and with how well prepared she has been for her new position and credits um, Dr. Hastings and the amazing faculty here at SLIS. Anne Merriman in absentia received a bachelor's degree in business and economics from Benedictine University. She's working at USC Upstate as the coordinator of archives and special collections. Next is Sarah Norman. Sarah received an undergrad degree in historical studies from Southern Illinois University and is currently working in rare books and special collections and South Carolina political collections. Our next initiate is Robert Smith. Robert received his undergrad degree in English and History from USC Lancaster and is working as the building manager and stacks manager in the Department of Rare Books at, here at Thomas Cooper. Clanitra Stewart, in absentia, received a degree in psychology from the Honors College here at USC. She also received her law degree from Mercer University School of Law um, and asked to thank the faculty and staff here at SLIS for their support and their kindness. Kelly Trowbridge, in absentia, has an undergrad degree from Appalachian State and is working as a teen librarian in Port Orange, Florida. Yolanda Van Arnhem in absentia. She received a bachelor's degree in education and is currently working as the instructional design librarian at the College of Charleston Libraries. And the last initiate this evening is Bella Weenham in absentia. She has an undergrad degree in history from here at USC and is working as a reference librarian 
in Augusta. And she asked me to send some shout outs and kudos to Dr. Lewis and Dr. RJ and Dr. Albright. She learned so much from them and also thanks them for their guidance. Um, I think as you can hear from these 10 amazing initiates that they were well prepared um, and give a lot of credit back to the School of Library and Information Science as I know um, we do as well. So congratulations to our new members and to those who aren't here. Love award ceremonies. We forgot to thank Susan Rathbun Grubb. Dr. Rathbun Grubb is the faculty advisor for our Beta Phi Mu chapter. Thank you. Excellent job. I can't wait to hear what Pamela Wright has to say, but I am so looking forward to handing out these awards. Oh, it's so exciting. So let's start with the William M. Trafton III Outstanding Student Award for Leadership. And it's based on the efforts and activities by a current student who promotes a sense of community in the school. Taken into consideration is the student's participation in school activities and interactions with other students while doing so. The potential for success in the library and information field professions is demonstrated through community involvement and professional participation. And tonight I'm honored to give that award to Morgan Kinder. Morgan is finishing, yeah. <laughs> now, he's gonna hate this part because he has to stand here where I say nice <laughs> things about him. Morgan is finishing his second year of library school with us and will be graduating in a few short weeks. Well, we could change that. No, 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 we won't change that. No, no, no. <laughs> He's focused his studies on management, management and administration for public libraries and services to diverse and underserved populations. He currently serves as a graduate assistant in the, in the Office of Student Services and as an intern with Thomas Cooper's Library Scholar Commons. Morgan was born and raised in Columbia and is actually a neighbor of mine. <laughs> living here for 18 years before he attended College of Charleston and he keeps talking about how nice Charleston is and I just look at him and go yeah, yeah. <laughs> while here at the at, while there he acquired dual BAs in English and classics and developed an enthusiasm for traveling abroad I think traveling anywhere mm -hmm. he loves to travel <laughs> And during his tenure as president of our Library and Information Science Student Association, which is like a big job and done well, our, he's organized the students for several community projects to underserve populations and many nights of trivia against the faculty and staff. Now, <clears throat> we're not gonna talk about the scores of the trivia and it's my honor to present the, win the Trafton Award to you. My dear, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. You want to say anything? You can't. Um, you want to? Oh, uh, I had planned for this. Um, good. <laughs> good. Uh, just um, on. Good lord. Okay. Uh, thank you uh, to Dr. Hastings to. Uh, Drs. Brown, Dr. Lewis, who are the list of faculty advisors, uh, to my fellow officers, the members, and the faculty and staff here at SLIS, um, I truly could not have achieved as much success in the organization without the help of each and every one of you. Thank you all very much. Excellent, Morgan. Good job. And to Dr. Keeling, the manager of student services, let you come and go as you please? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Our next award is the Wayne S. Yenowin Distinguished Student Award. It's an annual award presented to a graduate from a previous year's class. And it's not based just on grade point ratio or average, but also on the quality of the student's class participation, ability to assimilate class information, I guess that's what we're trying to teach them, and the skill to transfer material learned in one class to assignments in other classes. 
It's based on the entire body of a student's work. And I'm honored to present that award to John Zelenka tonight. John is originally... John is originally from Irma, South Carolina, and went to school in the northwestern part of the state. Originally, he had the name in there. We removed that. <clears throat> no. Before returning to Columbia to join us for his MLIS, despite sharing office with me, Carolyn Delton, and Noni Price, and our attempts to convince him otherwise, he's never once regretted receiving nor thought of tearing up his blank degree. A Clemson degree. <laughs> John came to SLIS with every intention of leaving as an archivist. And in a sense, you are. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but instead, now would describe himself as a jack of all trades but master of none, which I have that in quotes because that's what he said. John is currently living in Atlanta where he's putting those skills to use as a research analyst with Kiwit which is one of the three largest construction companies in North America. It's a job he never would have heard of, much less considered, had it not been for one of my previous students from the University of North Texas. In John's words, on a daily basis, I put to use at least one skill from each and every one of my SLIS classes or experiences. Thank you, John. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. All right, see, see what I'm saying? Is this fun or what? <gasps> and now we get to give an award, the F. William Summers Outsta Outstanding Alumni Award, which recognizes an individual's outstanding contributions to the school and to the profession. It's presented selectively, not annually or prescribed, and um, it's presented as one of our graduates distinguishes themselves and, um, in the field. It reflects the individual's commitment to excellence and is a reflection of a career dedicated to the advancement of the profession. I am honored to give this award to Miss Mary Margaret Nye, or Mamie as we know her. She has done more for us in Maine than I believe the whole state. <laughs> Mamie, please come forward. I got other things to say. I decided it's better if you stand and hold them something. Sorry for those of you that I didn't give the award to early. Um, so, she came to SLIS with substantial professional experience and since then has put all of her good skills to use. When a Maine cohort student, she was highly esteemed by the faculty and staff and seen as a friend and quiet leader by her colleagues. After graduation in 2008, she served as director of the South Barrick Library, and in the words of the town manager, she did a terrific job. <laughs> Mamie was next welcomed by the Maine State Library, where she became the Southern Maine Library District Consultant in January 2012. In this position, she provided support to a network of public, school, academic, and special libraries in several Southern Maine counties. Currently, Mamie is the director of the Auburn Public Library, where she guides services to the fourth largest public library population in the state of Maine. She approaches this position with the same enthusiasm and commitment that she's evidenced everywhere, and she's been warmly welcomed as the director of that library system. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And we put this one last. Our final award this evening is the John N. Olsgaard Distinguished Service Award, and it recognizes an individual who's made exceptional contributions to the school. Their sharing of time and expertise and how they've benefited the students, alumni, faculty, and staff of the school over time. 
It's presented to someone who is a true example of service to the profession, the school, and the university. And I am absolutely delighted and honored to present the award tonight to Jane Oldsgard. Jane? No crying, no crying aloud. <laughs> um, Jane Olsgaard was born and raised in South Dakota, and look what, we got her in South Carolina. She's called South Carolina her home since 1984. And even, and she says that that um, still makes her a Midwesterner, but we're questioning that. Her undergraduate degree is in history from South Dakota State. And a week prior to her graduation, she started a staff job in the acquisitions department. She even had a private office because she was using a key punch machine to record the book purchases. <laughs> Later, she started library school at the University of Iowa, and her husband to be, John Olsgaard, also started library school that same semester. The classes were small. And almost all the students were full-time, so they got to know each other very well. Her first professional job was in the acquisitions department at the University of Missouri at Columbia, Missouri. And romance and marriage brought her back to South Dakota, but this time at the University of South Dakota Medical School. Her first job was at the Morris Village Alcohol and Drug Addiction Treatment Center, and she thanks Bob Noe. Oh, in Columbia. She's back in Columbia now. And she thanks Bob Noe for that job. Bob, raise your hand. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> she then moved to the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control as head of the library and educational materials for five years. It was a sad day when DHEC board decided their specialized library was not needed. However, Jane always bouncing was fortunate to be our first ever science bibliography for our, bibliographer for our university libraries. Today, she serves in the communications department as outreach librarian. And in her words, she says, I love the project management aspects of the job, the interactions with faculty and students through various activities, both ones I've planned and ones I haven't. <laughs> Jane's a frequent volunteer with our Cockies Reading Express. As a matter of fact, I think she goes almost every Friday and provides individual service for her students and faculty and staff. Our doctoral students call her their private librarian. And I think our, our faculty have the same sense about that. <clears throat> You're a true example of service to the profession, the school, and the university. And she says, that SLIS has been a part of her life since the day that she arrived in Columbia. How can I not want to do my best for the best library school there is? I'm not making it up. For those of you who knew John, you can imagine he's there laughing away. It's so good that she has to get up there and do this. I don't have to do this. But it's true. We were welcome. The first time we came to Columbia when John interviewed for the uh, assistant dean position, which is what brought us down here, the college then and now school has always been. Um, has felt like home and every one of you, you've kept me on, you've let me be sort of my own adjunct um, part of this school and um, I am so thankful to know each and every one of you. Um, thank you so much for this award. And let's give a shout out to Neil and Sarah, son and daughter. Raise your hand and wave. That's good, perfect. Very nice. Okay. Now, 
First of all, I thank you all for being here. I said that earlier, but sharing the award ceremony is so important to me, and I'm just delighted that you could be here. I want to thank the SLIS faculty and staff for all their good work in, in helping produce the leaders of tomorrow. Can't do it all by ourselves. They, they bring in their communities as well as their own expertise. And also, I want to thank our National Advisory Council, our Diversity Leadership Group. If you all would please stand for a minute if you're in the audience. And um, let us thank you for all your help in connecting to our communities. We definitely. You're the ones that made sure that we meet the, need, the service needs of the next generation. And we can't do it without you. Thank you. Now. I believe that Dean Emeritus Fred Roper is in the audience. I saw him earlier. There's Fred Roper. Say hey. So Fred's one of the previous deans and directors that we're honoring tonight with this um, lecture. And um, it's my great honor now to introduce Mr. Hewlin Bivens, our state librarian. What do I have? Oh. Well, it's not on my list. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Morgan. Uh, we have one more award ceremony, and this is the Karen Delton Service Award that Morgan Kinder is going to present as president of LISA. Um, as outgoing president of LISA, and if uh, the other officers and chairs are willing to join me up here, we can present this award or these awards on behalf of our members and other officers and chairs who are not present with us tonight. Um, so the Carolyn Delton Award has been given out for the past two years in recognition of the SLIS faculty and staff who have been integral to the success of LISA as an organization and the student body at large. Um, the hard part is narrowing it down to just two recipients because, as I said before, uh, SLIS is blessed to have a faculty and staff that is truly supportive and there's not a person here that I can think of who has not shown uh, enthusiasm and support in the fullest for our organization. Uh, we've been loved and blessed by everybody here. Um, Alyssa has just had a huge year. Uh, Dr. Hastings told you we traveled uh, up to North Carolina to tour some libraries in addition to some of the libraries we toured here on campus. Uh, we had major success fundraising. Uh, we strengthened our partnership with the South Carolina, South Carolina Library Association, which enabled us to volunteer at the SCLA convention last November, which was just a huge treat for everybody who got to go. And uh, there's just been so many other things we've done that are just not possible without the support of the faculty and staff. Um, in light of that, uh, one of the big initiatives we undertook again this year was making LISA more accessible to our distance ed members uh, throughout the nation. Uh, that would be impossible to do uh, without being able to stream our presentations and our meetings for the benefit of everybody who's abroad. Uh, the one person who was more integral in that than anybody else was Lewis Ziegler, and we would like to present him with the Carolyn Delton Service Award for all his hard work. If someone could take Lewis's picture, that would be great. <laughs> Come on, Grant. <laughs> I'm never on this side of the <laughs> This year was a very big year for me. Uh, taking on the role of leader uh, was a huge challenge, and we also had some new faculty advisors come on board. So it was a learning process for me and Dr. Brown and Dr. Lewis and everybody else, and we just had a ton of fun with it. But um, there was one person who was always willing to give their advice and impart their knowledge and their experience in that role uh, in recognition of her continued service and her experience as faculty advisor to LISA, we would also like to present the other Carolyn Dalton Award to Dr. Faley to Kiefner.
Thank you all very much.